behind a pulpit. It's all the same to God. You save it, you serve it, he's going to honor it and he'll bless you. But if you hide behind the ministry and you're not pure hearted, right. no, he's not going to be impressed. Right. Is this helping anybody today? Yeah. Is he yeah. making anybody mad? Yeah. No. <laughs> yes and no. I said, anybody making mad there? Yeah. <laughs> we were not bitter until we started listening to you. <laughs> we were fine. Now you're making me very bitter, Sister Marshall. Well, you need to forgive me. Yeah. Forgive me if I'm stepping on your toes. Amen. You have to. <laughs> Listen, when, 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 when someone does something to hurt you, you might experience two things. Regret that they did that and anger. And then, of course, other feelings that the anger will lead to bitterness and, and, and all of that. Regret and anger, these emotions are not wrong. They're not wrong. Jesus said, be angry. And the word and in Greek can also mean also, mm -hmm. even though, don't sin. Right. So there is a, there is a, there is a righteous anger. Right. You're not sinning when you're here. Right. Then you can cross over to unrighteous anger. Right. Where you want that person destroyed. Or you want them out of your life. Or you refuse to talk to them or share the gospel with them. Wow. So the Lord said, you have to go. He said, go where? Said, You've got to go visit your uncle. Remember, I don't know where he lives, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but your mother knows where he lives. So you've got to go and go visit him. And you're going to tell him to his face that you forgive him. And you're going to reconcile with him. I said, <laughs> 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 now I'm too busy. I've got a full schedule. I gotta go to Corona. No, no, that was a long time ago. I didn't know about the pounds then. But. And 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 I'm like, I cannot believe I I do. I'm busy with everything. I'm trying to help. I counsel. I pray for people. I I I try to do a lot. Of, why do you want me to? Because because your heart's not pure. Oh, it felt like God just hit me, or I don't know what it was. Felt sick. <laughs> When he said my heart was not pure, I felt sick. So I couldn't pray for anybody after that. Ruined completely my weekend. I went home, tried to ignore it. I couldn't. So I took the car, got the address, took the car, and drove. He didn't live that close by, but I drove. Drove, parked my car outside my uncle's house, looked at the house, and then I drove back home. <laughs> You're all like, man, you're a really bad person. <laughs> yeah. I was lost. So I went and told the Lord, I said, well, I don't think he was in the house. I didn't even try. I don't think he probably wasn't in the house, okay? But I tried. I tried. I went there, and I looked at the house, and you know, I didn't see him around, so, well, you didn't even knock on the door. You didn't make any attempt. Go back. And I'm like, Huh? So I waited days, tried to make sure, you know, hopefully God would have forgotten. <laughs> Maybe he's not going to bug me about it anymore. You know, God might forget. No, he's not going to forget. Are you kidding me? Only thing he forgets is your sins when you repent. Amen. He forgets that when you repent. And so I went, second time, got out of the car, went through the front door, rang the bell, and just said, please, not me. <laughs> no, 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 I'll do anything. You know, I'll go to Mongolia. No. And so he opened the door. He looked haggard. He didn't look like the man when I was 14 or 15. Because I hadn't seen him for a long, long time. He didn't look like that strong, successful. He's still successful. It's a beautiful house. But he looked haggard. And, you know, he just looked bloodshot. He looked terrible. He looked sick. So I looked at him and I was like, and he looked at me. He couldn't recognize me. I was wrong. I said, um, it's Vani. He's like, and then he's like, you know, my father's daughter. He's like, you, my niece. I'm like, yes. I, I just, you want to come in? No. I want to come in. Oh, I had this attitude. I was doing Jesus a favor. I'm being very spiritual right now. Okay. Yeah, you know why you're all laughing? Because you've been there. <laughs> Sit there with uh -huh. and, and 
And I went there and I said, um, I said, uh, I, I have uh, I've got just maybe five minutes, uh, so I'm, I didn't look at him much, and I just looked at look at everywhere else. So I'm like, well, anyway, I'm here to just say that there, you know, I've had some bad feelings about you for years and years, and um, and I and I, I I I forgive you, and it felt empty, like I didn't really forgive him. I was just saying it. Haven't you ever done that? Okay, I forgive you. Now we should move, but I still forgive you. So I say. So I told him, I forgive you. I didn't feel anything. And he just stared at me. And then he started to cry. So I was like, well, I'm, I'd be going now. And he grabbed my hand and he said, please don't. Can you please come in just for a minute? I want to tell you something. I said, okay. And the Holy Ghost was like, go. I said, all right, all right. So I went in and I sat down and he cried. He was crying. He was saying, for years, I was trying to get a hold of you and your brothers and others to ask you, to beg you to forgive me. But I became very ill. I was in the hospital for a long time. Came back. <coughs> I've lost my son. You know, his wife had left him. My wife has left me, my son. Because he was not a nice person. Okay? <laughs> and so, and then I was like, I was like, he said, I, I, I just, I want to say I'm sorry to you because you and your family did not deserve anything. And you walk in. Just this few days ago, I was thinking, how do I get a hold of you? And then I didn't know where you were. I knew you went overseas, you went different places, and I didn't know where, you, I didn't know how to get a hold of you. And you walk in telling me that you had these feelings and that you forgive me. I don't deserve your forgiveness. All this is what he told me. I don't deserve your forgiveness. So I started crying. <laughs> and then the Lord said, now really forgive him. I said, uncle, I forgive you. I'm sorry I held these things in my heart for so long. It embittered me. It didn't give me 100% freedom. I pretended that I was completely free. I was free in some areas in my life, but not everything. My heart was dark, darkened by this one thing. I just, I'm sorry, too. That conversation led to him making some tea for me, and then it led to another conversation. And the next day, my uncle was baptized in Jesus' name. Yay. Receive the Holy Ghost. It was my husband that baptized my uncle. Oh yeah, this happened soon after I got married, and uh, and um, and he got the Holy Ghost and he was so excited. He contacted he contacted his estranged son, and 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 it didn't happen right away. But within a few months, his son was baptized and got the Holy Ghost. I'm just making a long story short. His ex-wife got the Holy Ghost. It was, it was months later, but he contacted the ex-wife and, and asked for forgiveness. I met with her. She got the Holy Ghost, was baptized in Jesus' name. And then the ex-wife's older sister, we visited her because we got reconnected with his family. She got the Holy Ghost and was baptized. You know what the Holy Ghost told me when, when, when my uncle was baptized? He said, do you know how many of my children are standing in the way of the gospel reaching people because they're too bitter to go and to let it go to release people. They're too bitter. They're, they're unforgiving. And so the attitude of anger and vengeance and bitterness has stopped the gospel from going to the people they, they were hurt by. by refusing to forgive someone who has sought your forgiveness. Someone whose actions show remorse or repentance. By refusing to forgive such a person, you may experience a momentary a taste of satisfaction. You know when we don't forgive, you know what we usually think? Why am I gonna give him a free pass by forgiving him? The reason is, the thing is, you're not giving anybody a free pass by not, by, by forgiving them. 
you're releasing yourself. You're, you're, not, you're not getting one up on anyone that you're not forgiven. You're not forgiving because, as I said, they're already gone to another place. They may have remarried. They may have gotten a new family. They might be living in Europe in a chalet in Switzerland. They may be just, they have forgotten about you, but you haven't forgotten about it. And because of that, they're not stuck. You are. We are stuck. By not letting go, you hurt yourself. You don't hurt the other person. You don't, you don't have one up on anyone that you're refusing to forgive. You're not giving anyone a free pass by forgiving them. You're not. You're not. The truth is, you're stuck. You're hedged in. Understandably, there are many valid reasons to seek revenge or retribution. It's not right, but you, your reason might be valid. But retribution cannot heal you. And the only way to be healed is to look at the debt that is owed to you. And yes, by the way, let me say this. When somebody has wronged you, you must not and cannot, not must not, but you cannot excuse them. They've wronged you. Forgiveness is not excusing. Forgiveness is not calling a truce. I'm going to tell you what forgiveness is not. And then we're going to go into what forgiveness is. Is that okay? Forgiveness is not calling a truce and saying, God didn't call a truce with me. Are you kidding me? God didn't say, okay, you know, we'll agree to disagree. Okay, I'm God. This is what I want you to do. You're Vani. And this is what you want to do. So we will just call a truce and try to live with each other. No. God said, hey, repent and I'll forgive you. There's no truce until you repent. There can be no relationship until you repent. There can't be. So forgiveness is not calling a truce. God didn't call a truce. I cannot call a truce with God and say, God, stop coming after me. You know, I'm going to live my own life, but stop coming after me. I'm not going to disturb you. You don't disturb me. What? Right. No. Right. Forgiveness is not excusing somebody. Somebody has sinned against you, call it out. It's a sin. They've sinned against you. Okay. What have they done? Well, they've, they've done this to me. They've tried to destroy my children, destroy my reputation. They've talked bad things about me. They've tried to destroy, you know, the, the ministry. They've done this. They've said this. They've had an attitude. They've said ugly things. They've stolen from me. They've taken my stuff. And the thing is, the thing is, when they, did, when they do something like that against you, you cannot just excuse it. God is not expecting you to excuse people's sins. God himself doesn't excuse sins. He forgives them. Amen. There is a difference. You cannot excuse somebody. It doesn't make sense to you? Yes. And that is why when they brought her to him with stones in their hands, flung that adulterous woman at his feet and were going to stone her. He says to them, if you don't have sin, you can cast it. You know, if you don't have sin in your life, then go ahead, stone her. Then they drop the stone, they go away. He's riding on the sand. And then he looks at the woman and says, so... Where are all those people who want to stone you? Where are all your accusers? She looks around. She says, there's no one here. And then he says this, the most important statement. He says, I don't accuse you either. But don't do it again. That means what he's saying is, I know you sinned. You sinned. I acknowledge you actually sinned. I'm not saying you never sinned. You did sin. But I'm going to cancel the debt. I'm canceling whatever you owe me as the Lord. Amen. And that is forgiveness. Yeah. You acknowledge that they did you wrong. You put it down on a piece of paper like we're going to do it. You write down what they did wrong to you. They didn't talk to you. They broke up with you. They, they put stuff on Facebook. Really? <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> what did they do to you? What did he do to you? What did she do to you? What did they do to you? What did the city do to you? You mad at God because you buried a child, you lost a baby, you lost children, you lost a husband.
Because there was sickness that came and not God brought that sickness, but circumstances brought the sickness to your home and you lost somebody you loved, you cared about. And you've been mad at God because of that or mad at the situation, even mad at the person who died. You look at what they did. You look at all of the hurt that they brought you. You acknowledge that, yes, you hurt me. Yes, you sinned against me. I am not excusing you. I am canceling the debt. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I'm not going to rehearse videos in my mind anymore. I'm not going to come up with a script in my mind that if I ever saw you in the store or anywhere, that I'm going to come after you or whatever. Thank you. I know this past lunchtime and you're still here. Thank you. Thank you. But we need to do this. Is that okay? I know you're like, we're hungry. Please let us go. <laughs> I'm hungry too. Forgiveness is hard. Forgiveness is so hard, particularly in dealing with, say, divorce. Okay? They walked out on you after you've invested and invested. One lady I was counseling, she was married for 23 years. She put the husband through school. She worked and worked and worked so that he would get his master's degree. Okay? One day he wakes up, he says, I don't love you anymore, goes off with another woman. All right? Okay, I don't want to talk about what he did because that's not important. She came to me for counseling and she said, after, after 23 years and children and all of my savings and money and hard work has made him who he is and he walks away. She, she, she said, please, please, Bonnie, don't tell me that I, can, I, I, I just have to forget whatever it did and move on. I said, no, I'm not telling you that at all. Who's asking you to forget? Forget is not a biblical commandment. Yeah. Now, you don't have to forget unless you hit your head on us. Don't have amnesia, but you know, <laughs> but, but, but you know, I, no, God's not commanding you to forget the sin. He's asking you to cancel the debt that they don't owe you anymore, that you don't act like they owe you anymore. That you think, because if you keep carrying the fact that people owe you, you're going to want to talk about it. You're going to want to write about it. It'll keep you stuck forever. You're going to rehearse stuff. And I said, I know he sinned against you. But are you willing to cancel the debt? And I showed her how, and I'm going to show you now. She canceled the debt in my office. She started from scratch again. Now she's got her own boutique. She's successful. Children are with her. She's actually even bumped into him a couple of times in town. And she was able to look at it and smile and say, I hope you have a great day. Because she canceled the debt. She didn't excuse the debt. She canceled it. If a bank calls you and tells you, you owe us, you know, $100,000, you need to pay it. Technically, legally, you have to pay the 100000 because you borrowed the money from us. But we had a board meeting. We're canceling the debt. How would you feel? You're like, whoa, tell me where the bank is. <laughs> I'll open a savings account right now. What I'm saying is, and this is what I want you to do. Now, am I asking you that certain people that you forgive, if they're unsafe, am I asking you to buddy up with them? No. No, if they're not safe, forgiveness doesn't mean you hang out with those people. Some people think, well, my goodness, they hurt me, and they're, they're, they're not safe. But listen, if a, if a robber comes to your house, breaks into your house, and steals things from the house, and then he goes, he repents, he changes, he becomes a great person, he becomes, you know, a person that, you know, he's not a robber anymore, he's done time, he's come out, he's changed, he's a good person, are you going to give him your keys to house sit? I won't. But then he's reformed. Well, wonderful. He can, you know, do my lawn. <laughs> Wash my car. I'll find him a job. Somewhere else. <laughs> but I'm not going to give him my keys. Amen. So just because some people, not everyone, some, many people you forgive, help them. Be their friend. But there are some people, if they are not safe, and you need to find out from God who's not safe, you don't have to buddy up with everybody you forgive. Forgiveness does not require you to become your best friend and have lunch with them every day. No. Because some people, they don't change. Some people are not safe. This is helping anybody. All right. I know this is not a like a shouting kind of thing. Computer's going again. Come back. You taught me. 
This is what I want you to do. I want you to take your notepad. What did he say? What did Paul say? Philippians chapter 3. I don't think that I have arrived. That I count not myself to have apprehended. I don't think I understand everything. That's what he means. I have not apprehended everything. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. I reach forth to those, those things that which are before. Are you willing and able to forget what has happened to you? Now, the commandment is not to forget. The commandment is to forgive. The commandment is to cancel the debt. This is what I want you to do. I want you to write down. It doesn't matter if it's one thing, two things. Write down the person. There's nobody's going to see it. I'm not going to look at it. This is private. You're going to take it home. You can stick it up uh, on a mirror or on whatever. Or you can burn it. I don't care what you do with it. Okay? But this is, I, I, I have kept mine. I have kept my piece of paper that I wrote down and had to cancel. I want you to write down whatever someone has done. To hurt you, offend you. And even if you're sitting there thinking, I think I've already forgiven them. If you're still talking about it, thinking about it, it still kind of gets you once in a while. Makes you feel that, then you know what? Let's clear that out. Write it down. Write it down. Whatever it is, write it down. If you're not a bad person. You're not a bad person for, for you know, saying, well, yes, I mean, this still, this still irritates me. This still gets me feeling down. This still, you know, something that is played on and on and over and over again in my mind. I still talk about this. You're not a bad person. You're a person that has been hurt, attacked. You've had stuff taken from you, stolen from you. You've had people attack your reputation. That's happened to me. There's some, I don't know what people, they, they, they must be bored or not, don't have a life, don't have a job. And they will try to talk about you. They'll try to say bad things about you. I've had to write down. I've had to write it down in detail and go before God. So what are you doing when you're writing it down? You are acknowledging that there are some who have sinned against you. That they owe you a debt. That's what you're doing. They owe you a debt. And, and you, you know what I, right, you know what, when I wrote down, I, I wrote it this way, strangely. I said, so-and-so owes me. How do they owe me? This is what they did. This person owes me. This is what they did. Write down the, write it that way if you want. So and so owes me. Because it's a debt. It is a debt. They owe you the debt. They've done something to hurt you, wound you, for no reason. They owe you a debt. Take your time. I'm going to give you another 60 seconds and write it down. And some of you might think, you know, if you think, you know, there's, there's nothing, I'm fine, then that's fine. That's okay. But I've asked God to search deep in my heart in prayer. And as God has searched deep in my heart,